Welcome to the uh, regular meeting of council, Tuesday, June 21st at 4.40 p.m. We acknowledge that the town of Kirk Lake is located in, in the traditional territories of the Cree, Algonquin peoples and other indigenous peoples whose presence continue to enrich our vibrant community today. We recognize and offer our gratitude for their care and teachings around the earth and culture. We honor these teachings through our interactions today and every day hereafter. We thank for them for sharing this land with us. We commit to ongoing learnings about how cultural identity is celebrated, represented, and honored, as well as the inclusion of indigenous perspectives through action. Thank you. Much. Thank you. Meeting call to order, and we'll have a moment of silence. Approval of the agenda. Moved by Councillor Ivanov, seconded by Councillor Owen, be it resolved that the agenda for the regular meeting of Council held on June 21st, 2022, be approved as amended to include item 6.8, March 16, 2022, tax sales and collection update. All in favor? Motion carried. Declaration of uh, pecuniary interest. Councillor Adams. Item 6.5 and 8.6, employee of a Nico Eagle. Okay. Councillor Shaba. Item number 6.3, Swastika Forest Main Project Update. Okay. Uh, the, for the Ramana, your worship. And then the reason why? The reason why? Oh, the reason why? Okay. My, uh, uh, I'm sending direct to that conflict. Uh, my firm is a uh, minor subcontractor to the main contractor on this project. So I invite the client to come to our interest okay. in many voting matters pertaining to this. Okay. Duly noted. Acceptance of minutes and recommendations. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Shava, seconded by Councillor White, be it resolved that Council approve the minutes of the following meeting, minutes of the regular meeting held, uh, meeting of Council held June 7th, 2021, 2022. All in favor? Motion carried. Moved by Councillor Adams, seconded by Councillor Ivanoff, be it resolved that Council receive the minutes of the following meeting, Minutes of the Kirkland Lake Museum Advisory Committee held <coughs> February 16th, 2022. All in favor? Motion carried. Reports of uh, municipal officers and communications. Item 6.1, uh, radar speed signs. Jim Roman, Director of Public Works. Don't need to use the microphone. Don't need to use the microphone. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, thank you, Your Worship, through to Council. Um, we were asked to prepare a, a report um, on the radar speed signs that uh, that we have out in the, or up on the streets these days. Um, so this report is in response to that request, and it's an opportunity as well to inform the public on. Uh, on purpose of these units and their, their limitations. Um, th these units were basically purchased for road classification purposes. Um, the Ministry of Transportation uh, classifies roads based on the uh, average annual daily traffic and the legal posted speed limit. Um, now, once roads classified um, or once we determine what uh, how roads classified, um, th this leads us to, uh, to determine certain uh, design standards such as uh, road width, road grade, um, as well as maintenance standards such as uh, requirements and timing for snow removal and the frequency of inspections. And uh, sometimes road classification is even factored into government funding. So as a result, we purchased these, um, these devices uh, to help us nail down uh, what classification the, the roads are in our network. Um, now, in addition to uh, being able to count traffic, uh, these units can uh, determine, uh, display and record vehicle speed. And 
that's a feature that's useful as a traffic calming measure. Uh, you can see we, right now we have them set up on Government Road West between uh, the Mall and Chap Hughes, where, where the speed limit uh, was recently lowered to 50 kilometers an hour. And uh, it, it's useful for, um, to, you know, to point out to drivers just, just how fast they're going. But it should be noted that um, these units cannot take photographs or they can't identify uh, vehicles in any way. So they're really just there as a traffic common um, device. And uh, we, we actually have the, the ability to turn off the display key and just use it to count traffic. So we'll be um, placing these devices around town uh, throughout the summer um, to help us classify the, the roads in town. Any questions, <coughs> Councillor White? Sorry, I must have. I must be mistaken. I thought these uh, were purchased for the purpose of traffic calming. Um, so I, I must have been mistaken on that. Um, but because they are um, able to collect data on speeding, has that data been collected and analyzed? And if so, has it been? provided to the OPP or Police Services Board for action within the community? Well, we, we've just begun to collect the data now on these roadways. We did place uh, units on Main Street, yep. and it did identify that um, there's a certain percentage of drivers that, that are exceeding the speed limit. Uh, so this information is available to provide to the Police Services Board. Uh, to date, we haven't been providing them with this information, but uh, certainly it, it is available. These units are, are also available to be placed you know, strategically through throughout town in, in response to, to those types of concerns. Like uh, Allen Avenue is it, it, certainly a concern. Uh, certainly. And the start and end of the, the school day, and that type of thing. So these units will identify the average speed at a particular time of day. And that, that kind of information, I'm sure, would be of interest to the police. But to, to date, we haven't been providing them with that. Comes in her on. Yeah, <clears throat> I like Councillor White remember that we purchased these as common, uh, traffic calming devices. Um, that's back when uh, Ms. Billadu was uh, yeah. in, uh, director and we had long discussions. I remember reporting to council about what I've seen in Oshawa in terms of, of traffic calming. And, you know, I don't normally speed and if I do, I'm just a few kilometers over. But I can assure you that I enjoy those signs because I'm constantly comparing my speedometer with exactly what the sign says. And yes, I have caught myself where I've slipped up over what I thought I was going. And so personally, I find them very good in terms of traffic calming. The only negative I have is that sometimes you can't read what the sign saying. And we can't do anything about that. That's just where the sun is, how the sun is hitting it. But uh, I love having them over there. And hopefully, um, as time goes on, we'll use them in the school zones. Because uh, now that I have uh, a couple of grandchildren that are in kindergarten, um, it's just sort of re reminded me how unpredictable they can be. And... Um, Quite frankly, when I was five years old, I ran up from behind a parked car and got hit. So hopefully we can rotate them into the school zones. But uh, as a member of the Police Services Board, I definitely would like to see those stats um, in a report form, just like we get reports for council. Um, because the OPP, whenever the Police Services Board has asked the OPP 
to patrol a specific area because we think there is a speed uh, uh, concern. Um, they have different, they have official terms that I can't remember. They have always been very good at looking into it and reporting back. But their figures are always skewed because more often than not, people see the police car and they slow down, right? So this would give them real input if we have areas in town where there is speeding. So thanks, Jim, and keep those signs out there because we need to, to ensure safety in the community as well. Uh, I consider it a secondary purpose, but in classification of the roads because um, at one time we had one of those, uh, you know, poles that went across the road, but over the years it disappeared and they are quite expensive, I've been told, to replace, so. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rowan. Any other comments, uh, Councillor Shaw? Yeah, was there a, a plan to provide the uh, data to the Human Services Board uh, in future? And well, do so you need anything from us here to make that happen, or are you just taking your time because it's a bit definitely installed? Well, to this point, we hadn't been directed to provide yeah. the results to the police services board, but certainly. So you would have had a direction from us at some point to do that, right? For the council. Certainly. Well, I, I take it as okay. Is this something that we can do today or another time? Your, your Worship, if, if it's we the will of council to want to amend yeah. the, res, the recommendation, uh, I, I have Councillor White as the mover and Councillor Owen as a seconder for an amendment that uh, formal reports of the compiled data be forwarded quarterly to the police services board. Any further comments or questions? Well, uh, I just I just think we, yes, I agree we should provide that to the police services board. I would like to say for action. I just don't want them to, to have the information for the sake of getting the information. Well, for further action, uh, which may include that uh, maybe public service announcement to let people know that uh, if you're traveling in this street there, you, you want to go slow, to so slow down. Uh, like you said, right for so. Uh, if you have a cruiser sitting there, what do people do? Instinctively, they will slow down. So, but at least we can have that data to do service well for further action. I don't want them to just get it and then uh, uh, stop by the somewhere and we have that. I just, yep. I just want to clarify if the motion on the floor to amend the amendment is yes. by the mover and the second. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, so, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, and through you, just a follow up question. Um, so, is there plans? Do you does your department have a specific plan of where they're moving these units, like to cover the entirety of Kirkland Lake, or are you just specifically moving them to areas of concern at this point? We, we're we intending to work our way through the road classifications and sort of to justify the, the arterial roads and collector roads before we move on to residential streets. So we're looking at, you know, streets like Allen Avenue or... Is the so street. Tweed's there? Is that... Certainly uh, Tweed. Okay. Well, Excellent. Okay. Councillor Owen. Yeah, you mentioned uh, when school goes in, school goes out. But another time when speeding is a major problem on Allen Avenue, and I know this because I live close to Allen Avenue, is when events at the complex end. The people race out of there like crazy. And uh, it's... I would really like to see a stop sign either at third or second street myself. But for now, Allen Avenue is unscientifically a problem. Go ahead and read the, I'll go ahead and read the recommendation. Moved by Councillor Shaba, seconded by Councillor Eugene Ivanov. Be it resolved that report number 2022. PW007 entitled Radar Speed Signs 
be received for information and moved by Councillor White and seconded by Councillor Owen. And finally, that formal reports with the compiled data be forwarded quarterly to the Brooklyn Lake Police Services Board for further action. No further comments. All in favor? Motion carried. Thank you, Jim. Uh, item 6.2 traffic options for Boss Lane. Jim. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you to Council. Um, the Council has corrected that we conduct a site inspection of Boss Lane and then report back on options uh, for dealing with the uh, sub substandard design of Foss Lane. It's Foss Lane is significantly narrower than, than uh, typical roadway. Uh, typical roadway is usually 20 meters or 66 feet. Uh, now, on um, Foss Lane, the, uh, the actual traveled uh, surface of the roadway is the right of way. So it's uh, six meters wide with uh, three meters per lane. Now, this does meet. Minimum uh, standards for, for vehicle lanes. However, it takes up the entire road allowance and it doesn't have additional room for shoulders. Now, this can be a safety concern when you have traffic flowing in both directions, but uh, considering the uh, relatively isolated location of Boss Lane and the low traffic volumes there. We're, we're recommending um, the, the best option is to add additional road signage at, at this time. The type of signs we're looking at would be watch, uh, watch for pedestrians, yield to oncoming traffic, and uh, keep right. So, other options that council could consider um, they could change Foss Lane into a, a one way street, and this would certainly uh, provide uh, additional room for pedestrians, but I don't believe that it would be a, a popular decision with people that live in the area as this is part of their customary route for, for traveling back and forth from home. Uh, but it is an option. Uh, certainly widening the uh, right away is, is another option. This, this would require securing additional land. Could even involve removing some of the structures. In, in, in some instances, um, you don't even have 20 meters between houses on, on opposite sides of the building. And then uh, the last alter alternative would be closing up of the roadway. But uh, this is not practical. Um, but there's a number of homes that front onto Fossil Lane that uh, we have sewer and water. So access would still need to be maintained. So at this point, we're recommending um, installation of some additional signs, and uh, with with consideration of a one-way street, should the problem persist. Councillor, case okay, so that was first. Um. I'm not in favor of the signs. Uh, we moved houses uh, two years ago, and I realized about a year and a half after moving into a house, there's a little bit on there with a plate ball in front of them. And people don't notice that we're, as individuals, we're self centered, and the signs that you won't notice it. Um, I've referenced this before, I think, when Ashley was here. Sudbury's using, I don't know if you can see it. Anyway. Removable speed bumps, rubber, that you can bolt down for the summer season. Hitting a speed bump will slow you down. Whereas a sign won't slow you down. So I'm thinking that something like this would probably be more cost effective. It's a small lane, right? So you put it across one on each side of the cost lane, slow down for the speed bump. I think we get more bang for a buck off of this than the sign that people like there's a yield sign when we come up off of federal and then I've missed that one a few times as well. So I don't know if that's my suggestion for this one. The speed bump would be or speed hump removable would work better. Yeah. What about a reduction in the speed limit on that? 
on that lane from a, whatever it is, a 50 down to a 30 or a 25, uh, which would, you know, at least you have something that's enforceable by the uh, police if they have to. Uh, I'm not saying they would go up there every day, but they could you know, certainly try to control that. And people on Foss Lane knew it was a 25 instead of a 50. Uh, it might make that street a lot safer. Yeah, As opposed to just a sign, a sign saying watch out for yeah. pedestrians is one thing, but a speed limit sign is something that if it's passed by this council, that would make, uh, have, have an effect on that, on that roadway immediately and uh, it's something that would be enforceable. Yeah, it, it certainly would have an effect. Like the, the majority of, of traffic on Floss Lane is people that are very that live there with live there. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. the situation already. Um, we, we were thinking um, the, the signs would, would have an impact on, on someone who wasn't familiar with the area you know, to say they're in town for the first time. But yeah, certainly you know, speaking you know, would work yeah. or would help. Yeah, yeah that, that is uh, my option too. Maybe couple that with uh, uh, more signs, you know, and see what works. And maybe in about uh, nine months, a year, time, when we will discuss that again, see what has worked or doesn't. And you know, if there are no complaints, I guess that would be the end of it. If there are no complaints, I guess, well, we have to go back to the drawing board. Uh, as for the speed bumps tonight, uh, the problem with that in other material is that slow power. I don't know if you have to service them or you tell me. I mean, that so would be, can you take that off and when you're applying that snow and you have some light on the time, you rip that up or do you have to try to uh, navigate through those uh, in the intervals of this people? I don't know. I mean, you're, you're, you're the expert on that, but I guess that, that would be, uh, that would have a lot of serviceability, which means that you're going to have to replant and that is way so because of the potential damages that may. Uh, and occur with a retrograde attack. But again, it is an idea. It's good. I just wonder if I think that's done with that. Your Worship, Councillor Adams had a question. Councillor Adams? Yeah, just reviewing the report and who uh, was consulted in uh, developing these recommendations. I think we actually missed the content experts on this, being the Timis Community Health Unit and the uh, Road Safety Coalition. Uh, as neither of us are all experts on road safety, I think we should probably uh, reference them for some consultation on this before deciding on what to implement for road safety uh, controls. As we have a whole department within our province that's happy to help with us and I have experts on this. Councilor yeah, so White, or uh, sorry, Owen. Yeah, thank you, Worship. Um, yeah, I was, we received one letter about this street and the OPP did their study and gave us an accurate accident frequency uh, in that area. I didn't find the accidents, I didn't find the number of accidents that high, um, higher there than it would be what I would expect on other streets in Kirkland Lake. Now I'm the one that's always sitting here saying, we gotta make this a safer community, we gotta make this a safer community. But at the same time, I'm not sure that the stats that were provided to us justified a major change in, in, in that street. Yes, I see the potential for a lot more accidents on that street, but in the 40 years I've lived in Kirkland Lake, <coughs> I don't ever remember that street coming to council uh, as, as a concern. So yeah, I have no problem with dropping the speed limit. I have no problem with what Councillor Adams suggested too, is let's talk to the experts. Because to me, the numbers don't seem significant, but maybe to the Road Safety Coalition, they are high. Um, but I, I, I would definitely agree with Councillor Adams. We should maybe perhaps uh, defer this until we consult the outside agency. Councillor White. Yeah, I definitely agree with members of council that I think that it should be deferred at this point. Um, I agree with Rick uh, completely. The report that was given prior to this really didn't show to me a significant issue on that lane. Like I grew up there, I, I've 
been exposed to that for 40 years. Um, there wasn't a significant, in my opinion, uh, traffic accident in, in all those years. So there has been a lot of other issues brought up tonight and I'd be comfortable with having this deferred to a later date um, pending investigation. Oh yeah, a uh, couple of things. I, I we have to be very careful that we don't try to establish a threshold for action when it comes to complaints. So uh, it doesn't matter to me if I was there one resident complaining or 10,000, I think we should treat them and act upon them because the first has reported as 10,000 complaints. So um, the other issue would be that, um, you know, um, I'm not going to try to say, I guess you get, you must have done your due diligence. Maybe you talk to the health unit people, I'm not too sure of that. But uh, when, if it comes back again, maybe I will uh, ask you to please add uh, under the consultation with people that, uh, Maybe health care and other people that may have had uh, or something. I know you guys put a lot of uh, time and efforts into bringing information here, so I really don't want to be in the business of trying to uh, second guess that. Thank you. I think it'd be interesting. Like, when, when I was down at the uh, Crip Ropes conference this year, I actually I attended a session on uh, designing safer, safer roads in, in, in a town. And, and it might be counterintuitive at, at, at first, but the trend is now to design narrower, more winding roads. That, that we've come to the realization that drivers will drive at the speed that they're comfortable with. And, um, and so they actually are, are recommending now that, that, That's true. that you introduce that narrower uh, things and uh, obstacles as a traffic calming measure. So that, that, that's sort of why we went with the with, with the recommendation for signs. Uh, it, it was more just to address the issue of drivers who aren't familiar with the area, where they would bring it to their attention. Mm. But you might have bad news for you because uh, we desire was based on the code, as you know, and as, that code is not going to change over time. What you just said, I heard it, I heard it. I mean, what you heard, uh, uh, that if that code is not going to change, some of us that are in the distance designing road, you're going to design it based on the code that's in front of us, not what we want it to be. But I don't know. This is uh, it's not taken, I and mean, they should be looking into that. I mean, they're looking at that in the bigger city, too. To make that driving uncomfortable for people, mm -hmm. so they have to slow down. That motion to be heard. Okay, so uh, I heard the following. I have a mover, Councillor Owen, seconded by Councillor Adams, that it be resolved that report number 2022 Public Works 008 uh, uh, entitled Traffic Options for Foss Lane be received. And the following, and finally, that the following replace the second paragraph of the proposed recommendation. And that the matter be deferred to a future meeting of council to allow for consultation with the Temiskaming Health Unit and the Road Safety Coalition. We'll go with that. Can we vote on it? Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? One opposed? There's no one to vote. You will vote opposed. I didn't raise my hand. <laughs> yes. Is the vote carried, Your Worship? Yes. Yes. Okay, as amended. Item 6.2 uh, traffic. Sorry, 6.3. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, 6.3. Yeah. Item uh, 6.3, uh, Swastika Forest Main Project Update. 
Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Council. Um, Public Works has asked to bring forward a, a project update on our Swasky the Force Game project. Um, just as a bit of background, this project um, involves converting the uh, current Swastika water pollution control plant into a sewage uh, pumping station and then constructing approximately five kilometers of, of force main from Swastika uh, to Kirkland Lake for a tree that our, our new uh, wastewater treatment plant. Um, now, initially, the project uh, called for uh, complete decommissioning the Swastika plant, but uh, due to uh, projected cost overruns, um, that part of the project uh, was <coughs> So this is just a bit of a reminder uh, to council that um, in, in the future, uh, we still would like to uh, see the de complete decommission of that plant and construction of the uh, lift station at Culver Park. Um, Aqua Engineering was, was hired to oversee project management and Stantec was hired for project design. And the contract for construction was awarded to Pedersen Construction. Now, um, the project is moving along quite well. Um, uh, as, as of today, all of the uh, sanitary force meetings has been uh, installed in the ground and, and successful pressure testing. So all that remains now is the work at the uh, at the Swastika sewage plant, as well as at the two lift stations, sort of at either end of the project, which uh, need to be retrofitted to accommodate the, uh, the change in direction of the flow in some instances and, and in the amount of flow. Now, this work in the stations uh, has been delayed uh, due to critical uh, components, the Vitavictor being like a delay in the contractor being able to acquire things like the control plan and some switches. Um, so uh, the June completion date is being pushed forward into uh, a September, October timeframe, which will still be um, sufficient to, to meet our funding. Requirements. Now, in terms of the budget, um, originally there was a six hundred thousand uh, dollar contingency amount in the contract, and uh, in order to make this project fly, we had uh, reduced that contingency amount by a quarter of a million dollars to three hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. To date, um, we're, we're running approximately. Uh, $290,000 uh, in, in change orders. So we're, we're approaching the, the limits of that contingency amount. However, since since writing the report, um, we've kind of dived into the, the individual items in the contract, and there's a number of um, cost savings that were realized through, through the changes. And when you add them up, we're over the $200,000 mark. So, so in the end, we're hoping, uh, or we're, we're anticipating this, this project will come in uh, under budget on schedule. So if there's any questions. Councilor Rowan. Yeah, I have a few questions, uh, Jim. Uh, Aqua Engineering is separate a separate division of aqua that operates our sewage treatment and water facilities, right? Yes, it's under the... It, it's the same yeah. sort of corporation, but it's a separate entity. Okay. How often are they on site to uh, inspect what the uh, contractor is doing? Uh, they, they haven't been on site. Um, that, that's been... Uh, Subcontract, subcontracted out to um, a project inspection. And we approved that, even though we hired Aqua Engineering to oh. oversee project management? 
and then we approve them hiring another company? Like, well, they're they're identi they're, they're an identified subcontractor act actually of um, Stantec. The, the, the whole structure here is a little convoluted. We have we actually have two consulting firms that are overseeing this project and going back to. Okay, I, I have some concerns here. We hired Aqua Engineering yes. to oversee the entire project. The entire project. Yes. We hired Stantec to design the project and do and do contract management. Well, then what's Aqua Engineering doing? It says they are to oversee project management. What's the difference between that and what you just said? Um, I, I'm, I, I don't know the construction business. I may be asking stupid questions, Jim, and I apologize, oh, no, but I'm not, I don't know anything about construction. I have to agree with you that, that, that this is a little unusual. Um, Aqua was hired originally to do the entire contract um, because of When the initial, the original design came in, it was too okay. much money. Nice. Um, had to go back to redesign. Um, that's when Stantec was sort of brought on board to do the redesign. But turned out the contract that the town had signed with Aqua kept them in the okay. kept them in the loop. Yeah. Uh, at, at some point, that that relationship typically would have been severed. We would have just dealt with Stantec. Okay, and I think this may have happened before you were employed. Yeah, this happened. Yeah, so, so in all fairness to, to anybody that's listening, Jim was not part of the contract setup, okay? Um, and so I'm putting him on the spot for previous uh, people. Now, okay, so this subcontractor, how often are they on site to inspect the well, project? Well, Stantec... Um, has subbed out the actual contract inspection work to them, uh, uh, easier inspection, uh, yeah. and they're on site all the time. They, they, they've got a uh, representative here in town, uh, rented an apartment, and he's on the job site. So I'm, uh, I'm glad to hear you rented an apartment. He's living in town. Yeah. That's paused. Now, do you get regular reports on that project? Do they? Does that inspector send you reports or does he just send them to stand tech? Um, both. Okay, um, but good. I, I make the point to stay on top of what's happening with that project. Okay, good. That's because I've been asked many, many times by ratepayers. Um, they don't see Kirkland Lake Town employees on the job. And so they're assuming that we're just letting the contractor go ahead and do whatever he wants. And I, I just couldn't believe that was happening. I'm a little confused about all the contracts and subcontracts, but I am pleased that we do have a company there that's overseeing the project. I am pleased they are reporting to you on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And I have full faith in, in you as an engineer to pick up on anything that's, that's not done correctly. And I certainly do not want Pedersen to think that I'm questioning their uh, credibility or their ability to do the job. We've used them on many, many projects, and we've always had, uh, we've always been satisfied, more than satisfied with the work they've done for us. But I needed to get answers because I keep getting asked. So thanks, and, Jim. And that, and that kind of goes back to when, what we used to have an engineering department. Yes. And then and so we would have our town inspectors you know, on site. Yeah, that now without an engineering department, we we, we contract, contracted out that yeah. work. But um, uh, the Coosier uh, Project Services, they're they're working for us, and, okay. they're, and they're looking out for the town's best interest. Okay, and you just made it easy for me to explain people to people by saying. We no longer have an engineering department, therefore we've subcontracted it. So that's the easy explanation. Thank you. I will add, we 
<clears throat> have dealings with STEM tech over the years and uh, the reputation is well beyond good. It's excellent. No, we, we are quite fortunate to have the contractor who did work on this project as well as the consultants. Uh, um, everybody's working together to, to, to make sure this thing is, is being installed properly and and costs are oh, budget. being closely watched. Um, and, and a number of these savings can actually be attributed directly to uh, contractor suggestions and, and suggestions from, from consultants. So in the end, it, it's, it, it's going on as well. Any further? Oh, I don't. What happens, Jim, if we are not finished on time? We can ask uh, the funding agency for an extension. And I trust that they, they will, if it's a procurement issue, I, I, I'm sure that they have to be reasonable about that because these are not normal types. Yeah. We, we, we've gotten extensions already. They, they've yeah. already been in inquiring. Two, two extensions already, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And, and they've actually been asking us if we are going to be completely on time. And, and again, that, that October 31st um, uh, funding deadline right now, it, that, that, that's not their calendar year, so I can't see it being okay. uh, a problem. Yeah. I can't Thanks, see it uh, Any further questions? Any motion? Yes, I um, moved by Councillor Stacy White, seconded by Councillor Rick Bowen, be it resolved that report number 2022 PW10 entitled Swastika Course Main Project Update be received for information. All in favor? Motion carried. Okay, I just thought we'll get to Sir Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Item uh, 6.4, Community Standards Bylaw Update. Ms. Williams, or Bylaw Update. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Council, I would like to present the report for an amendment to the Community Standards Bylaw. The Community Standards Bylaw sets standards for properties in town with respect to the conditions of yards and land. The regulations contained in the existing bylaw have been deemed by staff to be sufficient. This amendment is only to update the administration and enforcement section. The proposed administration and enforcement section lays out a prescribed set of steps that mirror what was included in the property standards bylaw update presented at the June 7th regular meeting of council. The goal of this amendment is to improve clarity in the enforcement procedure so that town staff and members of the community can have a consistent and predictable path to follow on route to achieving compliance with the standards set out in the community standards bylaw. Certainly, uh, we do. We did need some changes uh, to update us to today's standards. Uh, uh, it's a very detailed report, and uh, it's well done. Thank you. Any further comments? <coughs> Moved by Councillor Lad Shaba, seconded by Councillor Casey Owens. Be it resolved that report number 2022 DV021 entitled Community Standards Bylaw Amendment be received. I find that Council hereby approve the amendments to the Community Standards Bylaw and direct that the proposed amendment, the proposed amendments as presented, be brought forward for three readings at the July 12, 2022 meeting. All in favor? Motion carried. Item uh, 6.5, and Nico Eagle, request to purchase Archer Drive Industrial Park. Economic Development. Thank you, through you, Your Worship. Um, the report is for information purposes. It uh, identifies that there are 277 acres that Agnico Eagle slash Kirkland Gold have offered to purchase. Uh, the 
value would be $818,913,000. The purpose will be to support current and future mining operations in that area that would contribute to the long-term uh, viability of the Macassan mine. Good. Um, how many acres? Uh, is 207, uh, 277. 277. Any concern or comments? Councillor? <clears throat> yeah, I just want to say I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased that Agnigal Eagle is uh, putting such a strong vote of confidence in Kirk and White. Um, they are a company that has a very good reputation for dealing with communities and being very community oriented. Um, they're also, they also have a good reputation for being a good place to work. So um, basically right now we have a bunch of land <coughs> with high mineral potential that we will probably never develop in the next 40 years. I mean, I'd love it if, I, if, if somebody could prove me wrong on that, but and Agnigal Eagle has a history of dealing with communities where they have to, to deal with uh, surface rights owners. So I think it's very progressive on Agnigal Eagle's uh, uh, position to come out, approach us, make us a fair, I think, a very fair offer when you consider the price of land. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, we will be looking for new industrial uh, land that, so we can welcome other industries, but uh, I think this is a win-win for everyone concerned. So thank you. Thank you. Any further comments? We have a motion. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Rick Owens, seconded by Councillor Casey Owens, be a result of report number 2022 DEG. 023 entitled An Eco Eagle Kirkland Lake Gold Limited Request to Purchase Archer Drive Industrial Park to be received for information. All in favor? Motion carried. Yeah. Six point six. Six point six. Request to purchase uh, surplus land at seven seven six Governor Road West. Jenna McNaughton, planning administration. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through you to Council, we did receive a request to purchase a piece of surplus land at 776 Government Road West. Um, the proposed purchase price is at the $2 per square foot that we've been looking to get for our land more recently. Um, there has been very little interest in this property, so we're looking at uh, proceeding with that sale. Is that the original bid? Uh, this is the offer that was uh, that's accepted at that eight thousand yeah. dollars. Any comments, or concerns? Okay. Moved by Councillor Patrick Adams, seconded by Councillor Ladchava. Bid result at report number twenty twenty two D E B twenty four entitled "Request to Purchase Surplus Land at Seven Seventy Six Government Road West" be received for information. All in favor. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item 6.7, pool bylaw update. Uh, look, uh, you're back on. Thank you, Your Worship. For you to counsel, I'd like to present the report for an update to the pool bylaw. The pool bylaw was last updated in 2007 and requires updating to address the modernization of privately owned swimming pools, like the growing popularity of seasonally installed above ground pools. This update includes a more detailed regulation section, as well as a prescribed enforcement section. It should be noted that the goal of this update is not to penalize residents with existing pools on their property. The regulations contained in the bylaw update would only apply to new pool installations. Permit approval will be required for the installation of new swimming pools capable of containing more than 30 inches of water. 
the permit approval process would mirror the system already in place for permitting the installation of fences and would carry, carry a flat fee to be introduced in the next user fee bylaw update. To ensure that no existing pools are mistaken for new installations by staff, a declaration form is proposed to be circulated to existing pool owners through mail, email, and other means, so that residents in possession of swimming pools may declare their pool existing in writing so the town can accurately maintain how many existing pools are in the town. The permitting of new pool installation is proposed to begin upon the passing of the bylaw update, while the enforcement procedures are proposed to be pushed until 2023, to provide ample time to differentiate existing pools from new installations. The goal of this update is to provide and make enforceable a safe standard for swimming pool installations so that staff and members of the public have a clear and consistent expectation for the process of installing a swimming pool. Any comments or concerns? Just, just a small comment, just to clear that pool owners that were already out there did not contravene any bylaws intentionally. This is something on staff, on, this is on the town. For you to counsel, the language in the 2007 bylaw does require a permit, but that was put politely and consistently enforced. Um, it, it was never, like, not from lack of trying, was never enforced. That's my understanding. Okay. I, I just wanted to put that out there that pool owners are not perceived as trying to circumvent the rules. Uh, some of us reached out, just did not. We played by the rules. <laughs> yeah, I just want to um, clarify for current existing pool owners, there will be no pushback. They fill out that form, it's declared as like legal non-conforming, and there's no fees, there's, there's nothing that they need to worry about on their behalf other than just to declare that they've already had this pool. Correct. And if someone were not to fill out that form, and an issue were to arise in the future, if they had evidence that the pool was installed prior to passing the bylaw, they would be exempt. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Rowland. Yes. I'd just like to thank our chief building official for really getting into the job and, and um, making changes to things that have been overlooked in the past. And I only hope that you and your staff will not be given a hard time over this. Um, council knows full well about all the handshake deals that went on, not just concerning, say, swimming pools, but concerning other matters. And it's often left council in a very difficult position because it's a he said, she said, and we weren't there. So I just want to thank you for this type of work and uh, Hopefully you won't, it won't come back on you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments or concerns? None noted. Motion. Moved by Councillor Stacy White, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen, be it resolved that report number 2022-DV30 entitled Pool Bylaw Update be received. And finally, that council hereby approve the proposed amendments to the pool bylaw and direct the, that the proposed bylaw as presented be brought forward for three readings at the July 12th 2022 meeting. All in favor? Motion carried. Item 6.8, March 16, <coughs> 2022 tax sale and collection update. Mike Parker, treasurer. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, Your Worship, and to the council. You have before you a report, which is a short summary of the results of the tax sale that we finalized in March. There's also some discussion there about the efforts we're making right now and our plans for collection of overdue accounts. Um, you know, in, in summary, we received just over $209,000 from the tax sale, of which we were able to keep uh, $173,000. And that's really a reflection of the fact that if the property sells for more than what we have on our tax roll at the time. The balance goes to the province. It sits in a pool there where other creditors can uh, take a run at it. Used to be able to take a run at it ourselves, but that's no longer available to us. Um, the schedule that's on the, on the website uh, gives details about how you get to the 209 and the 173, which properties were actually sold and which 
and the two properties that you've already approved for, for vesting. Uh, with regards to the rest of the, the report, you can see there's 2.4 million currently outstanding in taxes. Uh, this is actually down 750,000 from roughly the same time last year. Um, of course, you can imagine it goes up and down depending on the tax cycle. We have one coming up in, in a few weeks here for the July billing. So it'll go up quite a bit for a short period of time. Um, our goal after we get through that tax billing cycle, uh, the thing to keep in mind here, I think overall, is that we have one dedicated staff to tax collection and, and the tax revenue side as well. Their responsibility is to you know, make this all kind of happen, decisions of council and, and stuff like that. Um, so we kind of work in those cycles around the tax billing times. Um, so our goal is to, we're gonna take essentially close to a little bit more more than half of those outstanding balances, 1.4. And that we identified that relatively easily by saying who hasn't paid in two years, um, beyond two years, let me be clear. So that's 2020, that's anybody who hasn't paid since 2020, plus a couple of accounts that had kind of unique circumstances that we added to the list. So they'll be receiving a letter as soon as they're finished with the tax revenue cycle. Uh, the letter is essentially going to have three dates on it, 30, 60, and 90 days. Um, they have to get a hold of us. They have to make a plan or pay the balance. At the 90 days, if we've heard nothing or we're not, we uh, haven't come to a, a reasonable solution, then we're going to uh, identify those properties for tax sale. Um, of course, you, I mean, you've been through the tax sale process now, so it takes a year from that point before we actually do the tax sale. Um, so, you know, typically what happens though is within that, we'll say 60 days in this example, we'll get quite a few phone calls. There'll be a lot of activity. Uh, you know, some of it'll, they'll come through with full amounts, some of it'll be partial or plans. Um, so, you know, we, we don't expect there to be anywhere near, you know, 60 properties up for tax sale next year. Um, keeping that in mind, the other portion of the outstanding taxes is a little bit more current. Some of them go back to 2020. Um, we plan in the fall to kind of go through the same process, send out a group of letters with the same kind of timelines, with the same kind of wording indicating what our, what our you know, plans are with regards to their accounts. And we'll see how that plays in as well. So you could, again, you know, closer to maybe October, we'll send that out, but it'll probably be you know, early next year, the council will be making decisions on both particular accounts. Um, there is, there's a couple of, I guess, um, judging by the question I got last time, I just want to kind of put out a very short summary of what's going on, you know, from a, from a budget point of view and a cash flow point of view. So the whole point of this process, obviously, is to collect the taxes that we've We've, we've built over the years and at this point in time when you're talking about delinquent accounts it doesn't typically change the budget what happens is you get that cash flow in which is now then available to the for the projects and for the for the decisions of council you know so we have lots of capital requirements going forward there'll you know, be less use of debt there'll be less use of other resources to try and if we can bring these, these monies in uh, there is potentially, you know, two ways that it can affect the budget. One is obviously, you know, if if we put this start this process, uh, we're hoping that other people who are, you know, on the borderline and kind of lag in their their payments, but don't necessarily wait two years to to do something about it, will be a little bit more current, which again uh, will improve our 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 uh, bottom line in the sense that those revenues aren't lost to us in a current year. It also improves, we have a process that we walk through several times a year, but during the audit processes, when the change actually happens, we have a bad debt or bad collections type of adjustment every year. Um, if we're doing a better job, if we're having more success with the collections, we reduce that expense and that goes directly to our bottom line, which improves surplus in any particular year. But that's the easiest uh, sorry, that's the most obvious effect on the budget. 
Um, there is a, a potential negative effect, and, and you just saw it. If these property properties aren't bid on, you could end up in a position where you could you, you could um, register them, and and then you have to write off the taxes. If you want to keep the lands for for our purposes or for future sale, so then you have a direct hit again, a reduction in your surplus once you make that decision. Um, that's essentially what this report says. Be very happy to answer any questions. Councilman White. Um, not so much a question, it's just kudos to you and your staff. This council has been on this since 2019. And so the, the action that's been taken in such a short period of time by your staff is just absolutely phenomenal to get these delinquents accounts that sometimes are more than two years, some of them. <laughs> um, it's just phenomenal work by your team and, and kudos to all of you. And we look forward to the next report. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'd like to make it very clear. This is, this is a well-experienced and, and uh, um, I wouldn't say aggressive, but a person, <laughs> a person who enjoys their job and, and they understand why we do it and why it's important. And, and they've been applying themselves, you know, quite diligently to this. It shows amazing work. Yeah, it was <clears throat> nice to see uh, we have a plan in place that we actually follow. Uh, in the past, it's well, you pay your fifty dollars a month, and <laughs> it just got worse and worse and built up to what it was uh, in the past year. So, uh, again, congratulations on the job well done. Yeah, we're trying to meet the uh, the goals of your collection policy that you you passed. We're, we're not going to probably meet it for another year or two, but that's a staffing. You know, that's just a volume issue when you have this yeah, many properties. Councilor Owen? Yeah, I was just going to mention that we do have a very experienced tax collector. Um, my concern is um, burnout. Okay. We have done, she has done excellent work so far. Um, but we still have 2.4 million uh, worth of taxes sitting out there. Her job is much more than just a tax collector, okay? And that, and then in, in a way, she shouldn't be called a tax collector because it, it, in case she only does one thing. Um, I, I think I read in the report about uh, contracting some, some out possibility. I'm wondering, um, and, and I don't know, because I know nothing about operations. Would it be better to hire somebody, say, for a year or is it better to contract out? And I think when you contract out, you pay a fee plus a percentage. I, I'm not like, I'm just throwing that out there because I am concerned uh, about our tax collector, just like any other staff member. Um, and that's an awful lot of weight on her shoulders, especially when, well, you mentioned it, the tax cycles and stuff. You know what's involved, but the, the public doesn't. And, and, and I'm afraid if we don't get some relief in there at some point, that we may lose a very valuable employee. Um, and, and I don't want to see that happen. So I'm just throwing that out for a suggestion. I certainly agree with Councillor Owen on that one, uh, having worked collections in the bank and finance field and you can get burnt out. Uh, that is a lot of money to collect. Um, I hope she <laughs> can keep up the same uh, strength because it's not an easy job. So I haven't, um, I don't have a concrete plan to address that, but it is, it is on my radar. And we do, we, we will almost guarantee be using that, that particular contractor to help us with the collection, with the tax sale process. Um, we already anticipate that. Um, we also have another person who's starting the process of learning some of the tax collection and tax revenue side. Um, so you're right, the load is pretty heavy. We're, we're kind of hoping that those two things will give us some temporary relief so we kind of address the, 
how much of a long-term issue we have. Thanks. Good. Uh, Councilor Shaba. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know why uh, you guys uh, haven't done that, but a lot of uh, small firms right now, they are going into a uh, third party uh, debt collector uh, agencies because I mean, it, it, a time consuming and, and, and you're not getting anywhere. And all these third party uh, agencies, they're pretty good at uh, handling people to death. You know? You know, uh, and they don't live in the community either, so you're totally, uh, you're totally oblivious, and they're, they're there. So you know, the services that uh, you can look at, if, if it's allowed to be that on the school level, uh, to, to augment that with what you have in house, that way, uh, we'll bring in some revenue. I do know that they do charge a small amount of fees to uh, for their services, but uh, you know, we went we went to them in my firm and. Uh, it's been good to, to free a lot of uh, free that individual to do other things uh, other than trying to call people 10,000 times and get a response or email or whatnot. I don't know what it's like. So yeah. I think I uh, you know, consider a third party collection agency if it's, if it's allowed for me, I suppose. I mean, this will allow language. So I don't see how we come up with that. Yeah, good. Worship the council. I'm not sure myself whether or not you're actually allowed to use a collection agency for taxes. Um, what we were talking about here is a slightly different beast in the sense that once we once we've decided that something's going to tax sale, then we use a contractor to walk to go through the process. There's still some front end work required by our staff because they need a bunch of information. It's not. It's just a very time consuming process. Both the the preparation of the taxes the efforts to collect it and then this back end part right now that we're uh, that we're going through. Um, I'm gonna take that back and take a look and see if maybe we, we could get some kind of temporary help that way. Um, the the other part of this is is um, I, suppose, I suppose that's essentially it. Yeah. <clears throat> Go ahead. So just to say that uh, we do recognize the tremendous pressure and workload that the individual has. And we are looking at a variety of alternatives and options that we can alleviate some of that pressure and we can continue the great work that voice team is doing right now. So that is on our radar. Any other comments or concerns? Yeah, I have one about uh, the it's uh, 60 days that people are given uh, to come up with uh, payment. I guess they could essentially uh, contact you and come up with as minimum as possible uh, payment. And then if the clock start ticking again to work that 60 days, or how does that work? I mean, if, if you uh, have two days to go before the expiration of that 60 days, we'll get a $5 payment. So I just want to know. Start the clock again, or it doesn't matter. Just keep, 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 the time is up. The time is up. So that does not play out. Through your worship to council, um, we have people using that tactic right now who think that you know, by paying very small amounts, it, it doesn't trigger our review or analytical process and everything else. We understand that that's a common tactic. Uh, the sixty days the, to, to give you an idea of what we've been discussing about, you know, what what is an acceptable plan. Well, an acceptable plan is some very short-term plan to deal with what you owe. That's the, the delinquent stuff. And also to find some way that you're going to stay current on what's coming out this year and next year and stuff like that. You know, the, the comment of $50 a month was, was well taken because there has been scenarios where that was the case. Um, that's not our goal here. Um, you know, the, the community is very healthy and, and uh, you know, of course, by individuals, you might see some scenarios where that's not true. Um, but you know, we, we want people to get as current and as fast as they can, and and we're not stopping the clock. If you know, it, it doesn't stop the clock just by giving us fifty bucks and say go away. Counts turn on. Yeah, one quick thing. So the the person that's in arrears offers you a plan, and you don't like the plan, like it's. $50 a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can reject that plan. Is, is that what I'm hearing or? Yeah. The, the plan is, 
is just our attempt to avoid the tax sale process. It is not, it's not somehow, it's not really binding on us. Um, yeah. We don't, we don't have legal agreements drawn up every time somebody comes with a plan or something like that. If they're not addressing the, the uh, delinquent taxes and the current portion, then we'll just let it ride out for the rest of the year until, until we hit the end and see if they make a, an effort or something different happens in that account in particular. Okay, I think the important thing is, and, and Lab was asking about it too, is the clock isn't reset over $50 a year plan. The clock is legally reset if we pay. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and it won't be reset until we hit that one year process from our point of view, at which point I guess we will assess whether or not, you know, sufficient um, headway has been made or whether they, they complete the tax sale process. Thank you. Motion. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Vlad Chaba, seconded by Councillor Casey Owens, be it resolved that report number 2022 PIN 009, entitled March 16th, 2022 Tax Sales and Collection Update, be received for information. All in favor? Motion carried. Item number seven, consideration of motions. No other notices of motions. None noted. No, there is no yeah, 7.1. Uh, Councillor Adams, uh, reconsideration of flagpole uh, banner and announcement protocols policy. Um, yeah, I don't have uh, much too much to say on this besides uh, thank you to staff for uh, writing up this policy and making me look good with this full report. Thank you very much. Uh, pretty self-explanatory in itself. Uh, we couldn't fly the uh, pride flag for the month of June in 2021 and 2022 because we didn't have a flag policy. Uh, we flew the flags at Town Hall at the start of June before this policy. Thank you. And uh, yeah, that's all I got to say uh, on that one. And uh, yeah, let's uh, recognize pride and put this all in place. We certainly had uh, this corrected in a quick turnaround time, so uh, much appreciated by the whistleblower. Yeah. Councillor Owen. Yeah, just a minor point here. Um, says flag pole locations, and these are the three that I was aware of, but in driving by the cemetery, I see that we have two flag poles there as well. Um, I don't know who owns them, like, but there are two flag poles um, where the half circle driveway is, there's the um, shed or whatever. And then if you're looking at it to the right, there's some other sort of building or, or structure and there's a flagpole, two flagpoles there. Um, so <clears throat> I know the Legion did work around like at the cemetery. So I don't know if those are considered Legion flagpoles or town flagpoles or, but they are on town property. <laughs> um, the first time I went by, there was no flags on them. And I thought, hmm, if they're not being used, you know, we could possibly move them. Um, but uh, the next time I went by, there was a Canadian flag and an Ontario flag uh, flying in front of them. So, uh, so there is another location. Casey, so I'd like to thank staff for a quick turnaround on this for doing the right thing and to have the uh, polls put up quickly and the flags put up quickly, and not just for pride for any group that within our community that wants to be recognized by the, the town of Kirkland Link. Now, with this motion, would this be the time to add something where we investigate purchasing proper flag poles for town hall, or do we stay with the system we have? Is that for this discussion or something that has to come back? I think we just have to come back. If I may, through you, yeah. to all the council. So it's a notice of motion from Councillor Adams. So um, the recommend, the proposed motion identifies that staff will bring back a report with options, which staff yeah. had already identified that would include uh, at the, at, in the discussion with council, had already identified that we would include the 
uh, information surrounding additional five goals and whatnot. So in, in that circumstance, staff is actually um, reporting back to you on those options. So I, I think it would be uh, it would be a good point to have it added to the motion because it's going to be a part of the report. <coughs> Perfect. So I'll read the motion. Moved by Councillor Patrick Adams, seconded by Councillor Stacey White. It resolved the council request that policy for 2026 flagpole banner and announcement protocols be amended to allow for flag raisings and announcement proclamations at the town of Kirkland Lake Municipal Office, and that a flag raising and proclamation request program be established by the town of Kirkland Lake. And then a guiding document be established for the raising and half masting of flags at the municipal office in keeping with the protocols as set out by the Department of Canadian Heritage. And finally, that a report be presented before the end of this term of council for approval. All in favor? <clears throat> Motion carried. Item number eight introduction, reading, and consideration of files. Uh, moved by Councillor Lad Shaba, seconded by Councillor Casey Owen. Be it resolved that the following bylaw be read first, second, and third time. Numbers pass signed by the mayor and the clerk, and the seal of the corporation be affixed thereto. Bylaw number 2247 being a bylaw to establish a notice policy. All in favor? Motion carried. Uh, this next bylaw is actually a housekeeping bylaw. It, uh, the execution bylaw was uh, the report went to council in January of 2022, um, and I caught that the execution bylaw had not been uh, passed. So this is why it's on tonight's agenda, as the races are happening. I think the preparations are starting. To be <laughs> so, uh, moved by Councillor Rick Owen, seconded by Councillor Stacey White. Be it resolved that the following bylaw be read at first, second, and third time, numbered, passed, signed by the mayor and the clerk, and the seal of the corporation be affixed thereto. Bylaw number 2248 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of an agreement between the team Northern Throttle, TNT, and the Corporation of the Town of Berkeley Lake for the use of the municipal airport for annual drag racing events. All in favor? The next bylaw is also a general housekeeping amendment. It's just to identify that um, language in terms of contracted services and uh, um, and such and, and typographical errors. Uh, so it's it's nothing that's come up that hasn't been previously approved by council. It's just simply a, a general housekeeping amendment. Moved by Councillor Lad Chaba, seconded by Councillor Patrick Adams, be resolved that the following bylaw be read first, second, and third time. Number passed signed by the mayor and the clerk, and the seal of the corporation be affixed thereto. Bylaw number 2247 being a bylaw to appoint a municipal law enforcement officer for the purposes of enforcing bylaws in the town of Kirkland. All in favor? Motion carried. Item number 9. Moved by Councillor Stacey White, seconded by Councillor Casey Owens, did resolve that the following bylaw be read a first, second, and third time. Number passed, signed by the mayor and the clerk, and the seal of the corporation be affixed thereto. Bylaw number 2250, being a bylaw to prescribe standards for maintenance and occupancy of properties within the town of Kirkland. All in favor? Motion carried. Moved by Councillor Patrick Adams, seconded by Councillor Lad Chaba, be it resolved that the following bylaw be read at first, second, and third time. Number passed, signed by the mayor and clerk, and the seal of the corporation be affixed thereto. Bylaw number 2251, being a bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to execute documents related to the sale of 776 Government Road West to Teresa Ernie. All in favor? Motion carried. Seems like such a technicality, doesn't it? Um, just... Moved by Councillor Lad Chaba, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. Be it resolved that the following bylaw be read at first, second, and third time numbered, passed, signed by the mayor and clerk, and the seal of the corporation be affixed thereto. Bylaw number 2250, being a bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to execute documents related to the sale of land in the Archer Drive Industrial Park to Kirkland Lake Rules Limited. All in favor? 
Item number nine, questions from council to staff. None noted. Uh, item 10, notices of motion. Are there any notices of motion? None noted. Councilors reports. I attended the Canadian Mining Expo in uh, Timmins on uh, invitation from uh, the mayor of Timmins. Uh, was an excellent uh, presentation of the exhibitors. Uh, uh, I think Gold was there almost. Uh, uh, there was 8,000 people there in, in over two days. So it was uh, a good networking opportunity and an opportunity to see what uh, different products and services are, are available in the mining industry. So it was quite enjoyable. And I uh, competed in the drilling contest, but I didn't do too well. <laughs> <laughs> I was also attending. It's a motion. A motion. Yeah. Moved by Councillor Rick Owen, seconded by Councillor Stacy White. Be result with the verbal updates from members of council be received. All in favor? session confirmation by law. Moved by Councillor Patrick Adams, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. Be it resolved that the following bylaw be read a first, second, and third time numbered, passed, signed by the mayor of clerk, and a seal of the corporation be affixed there too. Bylaw number 2253 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council at its meeting held June 21st, 2022. All in favor? Motion carried. Moved by Councillor Casey Owens, seconded by Councillor Stacey White. Be the result of this regular meeting of council, we now adjourn at 6 02 p.m.